Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean from FlippedMath.com. In this video, we're gonna look at the BC test from uh, 2022, AP Calculus free response question, but this is BC number five. And this question has a few pieces in it that are both from the AB test, but then there's a little bit of BC twist to it. So you'll see what I mean. So this first one is actually, uh, was an AB topic. And it's a pretty straightforward thing, and that is we're just finding the area of region R. So you look here at R, and all we're doing is going from one to five, of underneath this curve, which is one over X. So that's a pretty straightforward setup. Area under the curve is just the integral of that function. So we're going from one to five, integrate this thing. And then remember one over X, the integral of that is natural log of X. And technically we have the absolute value of X in there, but it's not gonna matter because our uh, boundaries, our limits are both positive. And then we plug in the five, plug in the one, and then lastly, do you recognize what the natural log of one is? Natural log of one is zero. Hopefully that's ingrained in your mind at this point in the year. And so you just have natural log of five. And this is from lesson 6.8. Now, actually we learned area under the curve before 6.8, but the reason I say 6.8 is because 6.8 is where we go over some of the uh, basic rules and notation for antiderivatives. And that includes the one over X, integrating one over X to get the natural log. All right, let's go on to part B. For part B, we're looking at the region R again, but now this is the base of a solid. So this is the base and we have cross sections that are perpendicular to the X axis. Oh, nice, X axis is always a little easier. So we're, we're having cross sections that are looking like this and then they come off the page and they form a rectangle, something like, oh, that was awful. So they're coming off of the page towards us and all of these little sections are forming rectangles, 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 and it's going to create a solid. Now, the nice thing about this problem is we don't have to calculate this area of the rectangle. We don't have to use the one over X and try and come up with what the height is or anything like that. They give it to us. Notice here, it says area. That is the area of one cross section. So we're just trying to find the infinite number of cross sections between one and five. So we set this up with an integral. We're gonna go from one to five, the area of the rectangle, which is that right there. So it's the area of the rectangle with respect to X. And that's the setup. Okay, that's how easy the setup of this is. If you recognize that this is already the area, you don't have to do a whole bunch of extra work to figure that out. Now, this is where the BC part comes in. And that is that in order to uh, integrate this, uh, you know, I first tried U substitution. I was like, okay, U equals X over five. And then I tried U substitution, but I couldn't get this X to cancel and it was all messed up. And I realized, oh yeah, this is a BC exam. This is integration by parts. So just as a reminder, integration by parts, is when you have an integral that looks like this. So one part is a U and one part is the DV, then it can equal this thing, U times V minus the integral of V DU. Now, for those of you who watched my lessons, I did it just a little bit differently with different notation. And so it would look like this, but it is exactly the same thing. So what we're gonna do here is identify our two parts. So we'll say this part is our U and this part is our DV. So we can write down that u equals x and dv is going to equal the e raised to the x over five uh, dx. All right, so take the derivative of this one. So du is going to equal the derivative of x is just gonna be the dx. And then we integrate this one so that we can go backwards a step. Now this would require a little bit of u substitution. If you think about this, you'd end up with five e to the x over five. Five. That's getting sloppy. Sorry about that. All right, so now let's write out what we do next here. So we have these two go together first. So we're going to have x times 5 e to the x over 5. And we're evaluating this from 1 to 5. All right, now we say minus, and then we'll have an integral in which we then do these two together. So we have the dx, which is just going to be the end, and then this thing. So this thing dx. And this is still going from one to five. All right, so now this here, we can plug the five in and then plug the one in. So that's where this comes from. Five gets plugged in, five times five, 25. Five over five is e to the first power. And then uh, again, the one gets plugged in and we have that. Okay, so that's the first part. Minus, and now we have to take the integral. We integrate this thing. Oh, what's that gonna give us? It gives us this. So we have that five still there. And then the integral of that is gonna be five e to the 
x over 5. So that's going to be 25. All right, so uh, let me go down to the next line. So I just rewrote that. And now from here, we're going to take plug the 5 in, then plug the w minus the 1 plugged in. All right, there we go. So now here, I would... A lot of times we keep saying, hey, you know, stop and don't simplify. But this is just combining like terms. This is kind of one of those simplification ones that I would probably keep going. I don't like the idea of stopping here when it's just combining like terms. I mean, look here, you have 25e minus 25e. So those things are just going to end up canceling. And then here you have a negative 5 e to the 1 fifth. Over here you have an e to the 1 fifth. So these are going to combine, but it's minus a negative means negative 5 plus 25. So my answer here would be 20e to the 1 fifth. So you had some integration by parts. That was probably one of the more challenging parts of this thing here. Now, what was this from? Well, two lessons. 8.7, you had to be able to recognize 8.7 for the base of a solid right there. We're doing cross sections where we have squares and rectangles. But another part for part B was the integration by parts, and that was 6.11. And you look right here, 6.11 integration using integrating using integration by parts. Okay, so now let's jump on to the last part of number five, which is part C. Now we're going to find the volume of the solid generated when the unbounded region W is revolved about the x-axis. All right, so we're going to take this area here, W, and we're going to spin it around in a circle. Oh, and so it's going to go, whoop. It's going to look something very similar to this. Mirror image down here. And it's going to rotate around, rotate around, rotate around. Okay, so how do we set that up? If you remember when you spin things, this is where you have something that's going to look like a circle. And you're going to have pi r squared. That's what happens here. So my let's just set up my first instinct. And that is, let me erase this a little bit so we can see what's going on. 3. Okay, so we would be taking an integral from 3 all the way off because it's going forever. And it's not bounded. And then we have the function... Oh, pi r squared. So we have the pi, and then we have the radius being squared, and the radius is from the middle to the outside here, the top of the object, which is 1 over x squared with respect to x. Okay, so now this is a problem because if you leave it like this, you're going to miss some points because technically we can't write it like this. We're not going to have the infinity here as a, as a boundary. You can't go to infinity on this. So instead, we're going to use limit notation. So you choose limit as, and you just choose a variable. I like using the variable t, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to have t approach infinity. And then I set this up as from 3 to t. Uh, again, any variable, you can just choose a different variable that you like. And then uh, we have the pi. Yes, the pi could come on the outside if I wanted. I'm just leaving it there because it helps me remember. And then I have uh, 1 over x to the fourth, or in other words, x to the negative fourth with respect to x. All right, now we can integrate. So I'm going to leave the limit part. Nothing's changing there. And then this becomes pi x to the negative 3 over negative 3 evaluated from 3 to t. All right, before I start plugging numbers in, let me just see what that looks like. Simplified. Okay, there we go. Pi over negative 3x cubed. Okay, plug the t in. So I still have the limit. So I'm going to have the limit as t approaches infinity. And I am plugging the t in first. And then I subtract the same thing with the 3 plugged in. So a negative pi over 3 times 3 cubed because that 3 got plugged in. All right, now I can have the limit as t approaches infinity. So anywhere where I have a t, which is right here, this thing approaches infinity, so that becomes a 0. And then I have minus a negative, so it's plus. And then I have pi over 3 times 3 times 3 to the 4th, basically, which is 81. So we could say the answer to this is pi over 81. All right, hopefully that makes sense. That was a little bit confusing with some of the steps there, but I, I look at here, you're going to miss points if you don't use this limit notation. You have to use the limit as t approaches infinity or b or a or whatever variable you want to use. It doesn't really matter. And then, uh, but this is important here that you don't use the infinity up there. And then what lesson is this from? Well, a couple places. 8.11, 8.11, that lesson is the washer method revolving around the x or y axis. Okay, so we, we revolve around. We did, we've did we done that one. That's an A-B topic as well. But the part with that improper integral, that is from 613. That's where we cover that. Right here, we're gonna evaluate improper integrals. So that's where we practice that stuff. Okay, hopefully that was helpful to you. This is Mr. Bean signing off.